and welcome to the first painting video of 2024. In this video, I'll be painting two Chaos Spawn. I've had these models for years now, and I thought it was a fun way to start the year by painting these old models. I painted them both very different and in a very sketchy, dare I say chaotic way. Let's begin, shall we? After priming the model black, I spray a zenithal of Wraithbone on the models from an angle. This will create a natural gradient from black to white, which is great if you want to work with either a slap chop technique or overall contrast paint. <coughs> this Chaos Spawn will have a more human skin tone. I thin down Dark Oath Flesh Contrast Paint with Contrast Medium and apply this on the bottom part of the model. I then take Dark Oath Flesh straight out of the pot and apply it on areas where I want it to have a darker skin tone. I'm doing this while the previous layer is still wet so it blends more. I repeat this process with a thin down Gulliman Flesh on the upper part of the body. I also do this while the first part of the model is still wet so it blends well. I apply Gulliman Flesh straight out of the pot on the model as well. I shade the entire model with Targor Raid Shade. This adds a sickening purplish hue to the skin. On the extremities of the spawn, I add Berserker Bloodshade. Again, all these steps can be done while the previous layer is still wet for a nice blending effect. With this scale spawn, I'm looking for a more disturbing look. A mutated monstrosity that still has a human skin tone works nice with that. Let's highlight the skin next. The first highlighting layer is painted with Acadian Flesh Tone. I use a rough, feathery motion to highlight the rough skin. The second highlight is done with Kislev Flesh. I keep to the raised areas of the skin and I keep my motion in a rough and feathery way to create some texture. The final highlight is with Flayed One Flesh. This builds up a nice bright skin tone, which will make more gross later on in the video. I really like this paintery effect the feathering gives to the model. Of course you can try to create a more smooth gradient with glazing, but as an army painter I tend to go for the more efficient ways to paint my models. The second spawn I'm making more alien. I first paint a random pattern of Folipus Pink thinned down with contrast medium. Afterwards I go over the model with Volipus Pink straight out of the pot to enhance the color. Again I do all these steps while the paints are still wet. The remaining parts of the spawn gets painted with Shyish Purple thinned down with contrast medium. I also add Shyish Purple straight out of the pot afterwards, but I forgot to film that footage. For the last step of base coating, I shade the entire model with Kerobork Crimson to bring the two colors together. While the first spawn is a more mutated human, I'm going full alien horror with this one. It, this will be a great fitting for Cheens or Slanesh. Let's highlight this monstrosity next. In the same sketchy motion, I highlight the model with Volgrim Pink. Keep to the raised areas and follow along the muzzles. I repeat the previous step with a mix of Fulgrim Pink and Palish Wish Flesh. With steps like these I try to make the highlights smaller and smaller each time. The final highlight is Palish Wish Flesh. I mostly do the most upper highlights to add extra brightness. Here's a completely different looking spawn, but that's the fun thing about these models, you can just go nuts with color and it will fit the model. 
Next I'm painting all the small details. For variety I am adding different color bones to the models. The dark bones are base coated with Incubi darkness. Shaded with Known Oil and given two highlights. The first highlight is Thunderhawk Blue. And the second highlight is Verisian Grey. The bright colored bones are base coated using Screaming Skull. Shaded with Skeleton Horde. Layered back with Screaming Skull. And lastly, I add a highlight of palette switch flesh to give them a bleached bone effect. By adding both dark and bright bones to the models, you can play around with contrasts. This darker model, I've given some brighter bones, so this will help out stand out the details a little bit more. While the human skin spawn has some darker bones, which will add some contrast to the model. There is no shortage of eyes on these models. I first base coat the eyeballs with a Rhinox hide to create a dark undercoat. I layer on use Sapti bone on the eyeball. I keep the Rhinox hide at the edges and use a stippling motion to make sure the eye doesn't get any smooth edges. I further highlight the eyeball with a screaming skull. I keep the previous layer visible to create some depth. With Abaddon Black, I paint on a dark pupil. Can be as small or big as you want. I accidentally got it right the first time, so I dared not mess with it any further. With some thinned down Berserker Bloodshade, I shade over the eye. This gives the already yellow looking eye a reddish sheen, which is great for monsters. With palette switch flesh, I add a white dot on the upper side of the pupil for light reflection. Finally, I make the eye shiny with art coat. You can use any glossy varnish for that, of course. Everything corn needs brass. Everything. So I base coat the crest with Balthazar gold. This paint has a great coverage and works very well as a base for both gold and brass. I layer on Rune Lord brass to add some variation. Shade with Serapim Sepia. And highlight with Kineptek Alloy. A lovely highlight color for both brass or metal. Any hairy patches I base coat with a batom black. I highlight the hairy patches with a storm vermin fur. And add another highlight of Karak stone, which will make for some dirty looking hair. For finishing touches, I first add blood for the blood god mixed with green stuff's world's true blood to the models. What I usually do is I get an old brush, get the mixture on, remove the excess paint and roughly stipple on the blood. This creates even more blends and if you focus on the joints of the mutation, will make the skin look bruised and irritated. I also add some big globs of blood to the big claw. Finally, I add some Nurgle's Rot to the models. In the same way as I did with the previous step. I get an old brush, I have very little Nurgle's Rot on the brush and then dab away. It works great when you mix it with the blood for some added grossness. And we're done. Here we have two Chaos Spawn. Probably humans in high positions or stature trying to make deals with chaotic devils and failing miserably. The life of a Chaos Spawn isn't very long, looks extremely painful but it does look funny as hell. With a new rebranding to start this new year, I am definitely looking forward to all my painting projects I'll be doing this year. And what are you guys working on? Definitely let me know in the comments. 
In my next video, I'm adding to my Atmec army and I want to show you guys some awesome alternatives to flight stands. In the meantime, be sure to check out my Instagram where I'll post pictures of current projects and behind the scenes stuff. But for now, thanks for watching.